you know, this is, uh, this, these are difficult times for the American people. Uh, we've got a situation that, um, frankly, our president has, has failed. It's been a monumental failure. Um, he had an opportunity to openly, um, unequivocally uh, denounce uh, bigotry, uh, racism, hatred, uh, Nazis, and, uh, and, uh, and, and he didn't take that opportunity. Uh, unfortunately, um, what should have been a day uh, of, of remorse, what should have been a day uh, where our president would have st stood up uh, in a very strong and decided uh, fashion and spoken up on behalf of the American people. He chose instead to try to equivocate. Uh, and the reality of it is uh, this is a failure again of monumental proportions. These are the moments that define a presidency. These are the moments that define a president. And, uh, and, and I, for one, am, am very saddened by what, uh, what has transpired since Charlottesville. Something needs to be very clear to our president. We're not splitting the atom here. If you have an opportunity as the President of the United States to denounce Nazis, you take it, period, end of paragraph. You don't equivocate. You, you, it, this was a forced, mush-mouthed, uh, uh, fleckless uh, uh, approach. Uh, he should have been resolute. He should have been the leader of the greatest nation in the world. He should have spoken up clearly and denounced hatred, uh, bigotry, uh, 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 white supremacy, and the Nazi party. He didn't do that. In my capacity, uh, we are resolute that the American small business community has to have a voice within this administration. Things like health care reform, tax reform, uh, uh, immigration reform, these are the things we're focused on. Uh, we are not jumping ship at this point because we believe there's work yet to be done. We have great conversations with the people around him people that are fair-minded, intelligent, progressive thinkers that understand the criticality of American small business. Listen, it's our businesses that are creating 70 percent of new jobs in this nation, and yet we don't have a voice in most of the administrations. And so we have to fight to have a room, uh, you know, have, have, have a place at the table. Uh, that's my focus. Uh, it, it is no secret that I was uh, openly against uh, President Trump. I called him a buffoon. Uh, I called him a clown. I said he was unfit for the party, that he had neither the talent nor the temperament. I called him a payaso on national television. To his credit, when he won the election, he called upon me and, and asked if I would consider giving them advice and counsel on a wide array of issues, particularly those that have to do with the challenges facing America's small business community. I accepted that challenge as an American that's my job, and I got to stay focused on that job, even at times like this. This is not about serving a president. This is about serving the American people and those job creators and business owners who put me in this post. And until they tell me that it's time to step off, I'm on the job. You're talking to um, the son of immigrant farm workers. I grew up as a migrant farm worker. I lived in a one-bedroom house with nine other people. I had an outhouse. Uh, as a bathroom. We didn't have any indoor uh, electricity or a shower. I learned English as a second language. I had to drop out of high school when my mother died. I was orphaned at 15. Uh, and today I fly on Air Force One. I meet with presidents, ambassadors, presidents, wannabe presidents, former presidents, never going to be presidents, senators, uh, and, uh, and corporate uh, uh, chieftains and, and, and corporate uh, uh, you know, icons. Yeah. I believe anything's possible in this country.